Hello everyone, it's Seb here, Seb in Paris, going live, and we're going to talk about photography and stuff. How does that sound? Drinking my, uh, one of my last ever glasses of uh, Coca-Cola, uh, probably, maybe. I'm doing this health program for the next 13 weeks, and... <laughs> Funnily enough, the first thing that you have to do is change absolutely nothing. So it's kind of a, a psychological trick. So I'm actually eating more crap than I ever have before. Leading up, and but I'm but I'm monitoring, you see, I'm monitoring how I feel about it. Uh, right now I'm just feeling, hey, I can eat all sorts of crap and I'm I I'm pretend I'm still on a diet. But from next week it's gonna get nasty. It's gonna get serious. So cheers. <clears throat> the guy who runs it hates Coca-Cola with a vengeance. So it ain't going to last. The Coca-Cola fest ain't going to last, that's for sure. So how are you doing? Hey, hi, everybody. This is the um, the photo chat show. It's the creative smartphone photography show where I talk about photographs taken on smartphones for most for the most part. Because, you know, you've got a fantastic camera in your pocket. I mean, it actually, sh yeah, it could be in a pocket, not your back pocket. But um, some people, they walk around with their, their smartphones, only costing like $800 or something, in their back pocket. They sit on them, and then occasionally they wonder why they've got glass in their backside. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is an incredibly precious piece of glass here. You know, I remember in the old days when we had bigger cameras like this. That was a light bulb that fell on the floor. You know, we had cameras like this and they had they had lenses like this, you know. I mean, we're talking a serious piece of glass. And if anyone dared to touch that piece of glass with anything, I would go apeshit. And now, you know, we, we sort of, oh, look, it's dirty, <laughs> you know, or, you know, tuff, tuff, all sorts of stuff. This has to be treated as, as with as much care, even though it's sitting on the outside of the phone, you put it on the table in puddles of beer and stuff. Well, don't, you know, if this isn't perfect, your photographs are not going to be perfect to start off with, even before you, you know, pretend that you're going to do something nice with them. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my ramble for today. So we're going to um, launch into looking at photographs. Uh, say hello. Say hello in the text. I'm your photo guy. I'm your creative guy. I've been looking for a self-identity, and I've found it. I'm going to be the creative guy, friend, you never knew that you always wanted. And um, and then I'm going to do creative stuff in it, like photo photography and writing and painting and anything that you come up with as well. So I've got uh, Jean from Skokie. Skokie, is that a word? Suburb of Chica Chicago. Hi, Jean, how are you doing? Thanks a lot. Say hello, by the way. Say hello, everyone. Say who you are. If you don't, if I can't, you see it says Facebook user there. Well, that's a problem. Uh, you need to go to streamyard.com slash Facebook and... So yes, yes, Sab can see my name and possibly picture, and then I will be able to do that. And it's much more friendly than saying, hello, Facebook user. So do say hello. And you know, it's interactive. I'm going to look at some amazing photos in a second. I'm just saying hello. Chris, hi, how are you doing? Good to have you here. Friend of Jean, I think. Karen, hello, Karen. You may have a great camera in your phone. My camera phone is crap. My phone camera is crap. But then I have the cheapest phone possible. You know what, Karen? <clears throat> I'm a bit of a philosopher in my um, spare time, and I've come to an, an overriding philosophical uh, conclusion uh, on how to lead my life from here onwards. And that is, I don't believe in anything. That doesn't mean that I... Um, I believe that I don't believe in anything or that I believe I know anything or anyway, I can get tangled up in knots. What I'm saying is I don't believe anything. 
someone says something to me, I don't necessarily believe it, you see. Um, and uh, I don't believe that photographs, I'm going to tie myself in knots here, I don't believe that photographs have anything to do with the camera. Let me give you an example. About, ooh, many, many years ago, I bought a throwaway Kodak camera. You know, it cost about 10 euros. And, uh, oh, God. It wasn't digital, but they gave it to me in digital form. That's it. It had a film in, uh, one film, like 36 shots, throwaway digital camera. No, throwaway normal camera, point and shoot in a, in a piece of cardboard, you know, and how much, what sort of lens would you get for 10, for 10 euros, including the film and the camera? <laughs> um, and possibly the processing, I'm not sure. So crappy piece of plastic. I gave myself a challenge. Go around Paris, 36 roll, like in the old days, you click, you shoot, you don't know what it's going to look like until it comes back from the processor. It's it's exciting. You click and you pay. You know, it's not like digital. You click and you throw it away or you click a million times and it hasn't really cost you anything. You bought the thing. So even if it was 10 euros, you clicked and you paid. You know, you weren't going to get your money back. That was your shot for that click. And... Um, and I got it back, and it, it was at the very beginning of digital. So what they did was they transferred the uh, the film shots onto a CD. <laughs> uh, and I, I got, my challenge was take 36 shots, and every single one of them I wanted to be pleased with, and none of them could look the same as the others. Oh, God, I must show that. I must put those somewhere, put them up somewhere just for the hell of it. And lo and behold, I was happy with them. You know, crappy piece of small plastic which was the lens integrated into the, you know, into the 10 euros worth. And I was pleased with all those photographs. You know, there are, there are apps now called um, plastic camera apps. And they, they take your mega, mega pixel shots and they dumb them down to look like they were taken on a crappy camera, like a shitty camera that cost 10 euros made in Russia or something. Sorry, Russians. Can you believe that? You know, what's going on? So don't worry about having a crappy camera. That ain't where the crappy shots lie, believe me. Unless it really is crap. Anyway, <laughs> King understand, possibly not King, understand that it's the photographer, not the camera. But seriously, I cannot see what I'm aiming at outdoors, no matter what setting I use. Okay, well, um, we can talk about that. <laughs> Uh, okay. Happy Tuesday. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Alice. So sorry for yesterday. Um, <clears throat> slight, uh, I don't know, may mind warp or something. Um, I realized that I couldn't do it yesterday. Um, so I'm doing it today. Right. So without further ado, I'm going to look at some photographs. Uh, so what am I doing? I'm doing this. Right, that's my, um, th by the way, we're in the, September's going to be incredibly exciting because, well, for me, because I'm starting a five-day challenge next week, free, in the group, in the smartphone photography group, and it's going to be five days, five themes, five photographs. That's it. How easy could that be? And this is all leading up to my masterclass, which is starting on the 21st of September, and um, it's going to be a month's worth of fun, believe it. Or me, believe me. <laughs> uh, right, so here we are in the group. And the theme, there was a theme last week, and the theme was, well, let me just have a look at, <clears throat> I'll just chug through here. So the first thing that you have here is what you can do in the group. Uh, Rob puts a sort of a, a rebel post up on his own. He said, I had an idea, but failed in the result. There's another thing I don't believe in, uh, and that's failure. How about that? And, well, I mean, he said, uh, I had an idea. Don't, he doesn't say what it is. I failed in the result. So not knowing what his idea was, I don't know if he failed in it. I need a higher vantage point. Well, okay, I believe you. It's true that you didn't get all of it in, the shot. The bottom is um, chopped off. So I guess you were looking for uh, maybe all of it in the frame, looking down on top of a fire hydrant, is it? And the fun thing that he says is, by the way, the red and white pole 
it is there for the hydrant to be found in winter when the snow banks pile high. Wow. What a place to live where the snow gets higher than a fire hydrant. That's amazing. So thanks for that, Rob. That isn't part of the theme for last week because it's not orange, it's red. What did I say? Did I say anything interesting? Doubt it. Carl, Carl Napola, so it sounds like it's a relative, says you need a drone. And I said fascinating stuff because I say nice things like that. Last week's winners in the theme, the drinks are on me or something like that, were, just to honour them, were Euriska with this wonderful shot. It's one of those trick uh, optical illusion things. It looks like the person is being either jumping out of a Coca-Cola bottle, bit of a theme here, or being pops in. She's about to put the lid on top and cut, capture them in the bottle. Fantastic. It's on the salt plains in Bolivia, I think, something like that. And she, um, you know, got a massive flat area. So you can't really distinguish the foreground from the background. And you get the person way in the distance and some sort of small object near to hand. And there you go. Really fun shot. So she was one of the winners from last week. The prize, the prizes are very good. They're my um, undying um appreciation and uh friendship and love there you are and this one was great this is from why have i lost the person who it's from i think it's from someone called angela ah uh, that's right yeah angela because i just took the shots and put them in the, the post without the names it's angela and i asked her how she spells it pronounces it and she said angela like in english so judging on her last name, which I probably won't attempt. So the do at the end makes me think it's probably Greek. And I think she's a friend of Despina's who is also Greek. So there you go. So this was maybe her first contribution. I really liked it. It's a, a lovely um, backlit shot of a glass. And everything else has gone really dark, but just the glass is, is glowing. I won't go over this for too much because I talked about it last week. And then the last one was this from Despina, which I really liked too. And it was, um, she, at some point, she said it was like a um, Mondrian. Was it Mondrian? The one who does those graded colors and they just sort of zzz, merge into each other. But it's actually a glass with a spoon in it. Great stuff. All right, so that was last week's winners. Who will be this week's winners? Let's have a look. That's me live. I'm live, hooray. That was me live some, some other time on the Sunday Sapsang where I talk about life, the universe, and croissant. Uh, this week's theme was orange. And I had a few entries as well. Good stuff. By the way, say hello if you've just joined. Very happy to have you here. And if you're watching on the replay, then say hello too. And I'll say hello back. And we'll have said hello to each other. A sunset. This is Ang Angela. So she was obviously excited about winning. And she's gone into the orange one. It's a sunset from my favorite window in the country house. Ooh, got a country house, have we? Maybe you just live in the country and that's where your house is. And it's pretty amazing. What do you think of this, guys? So let me have, let me have your comments on what you think of the photographs. So for example, here, what do you think of this? What do you think of this composition? I'm looking at it, I'm pretty impressed. Um, why do you think I like this? Any ideas? I mean, <laughs> whether I like it or not doesn't mean that therefore it's good, but um, or that it, or if I don't like it, that it's not good. But you know what I mean. What am I looking at here? What what makes me, you know, think this is rather interesting? Uh, the orange, rich orange, down in the bottom right, way down in the bottom right there, leaking its orange over the the trees towards us. Uh, so that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, fancy having sunsets like that. Uh, Chris says, love it. Beautiful coloring on sheer drapes. Yeah. The, the first thing that struck me apart from the, the, the obvious sunset and the pretty clouds was that it's, it's very geometrically chopped, isn't it? You've got the, you've got like three sizes of it's chopped into three parts as, as far as I can see. There's a line going across the bottom, which is a low horizon with the tops of the trees, which is way below the middle line. And then 
off to the left, like one third in, approx, is the curtains which cover the cloud. You can still see the cloud, cloud through them. And then the, the, the top right is like a square. There's a square because of the framing, the rectangular framing. And it's really good, I like it. All right, we've got another one from Dorothy. Dorothy says, uh, an orange part of my dress. A uh, Facebook user says, lovely colors and composition. Yeah. So I don't know, Facebook user, if you if you went to streamyard.com slash Facebook to let me see who you are, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, well, there you go, you know, part of a dress. You wouldn't know what it was. You might think that it was a drawing or a, a painting or something, but it's um, part of a dress. Now, the thing with this is, I would say, because you don't know what it is, um, it's pretty close to just a picture of the artist's work. Let's say the art, there was an artist who did this and it became the design of a dress. So that's okay. But in fact, it's just a record shot. You know, it's like if this dress, if this was in a museum, an art museum, and you wanted a picture of the picture to put on the website, this doesn't add anything to the original. So for this to be worthy of a, a creative photo, for me, a creative photo is one where you have added something. So that's why I'm a little bit dubious about uh, works of art, like street, in the street. Graffiti, interesting. You take a shot of the graffiti head on. You don't change anything. It's really their work, not yours. So for it to be your photograph, what have you done to it? What have you added? So that would be my, um, my creative comment on this. It's nice, it's pretty, but it's someone else's work. Do you see what I mean? Hello, Sam. <laughs> hello, hello. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know who you are. Nice to have you here. Okay, so, and it's, yeah, it's, it's different shades of orange, isn't it? It's pinky, orangey, reddy, pale, darker. Nice, I like it, but it's still someone else's work. That's what I'm saying. Uh, what have, oh, maybe it's Yoriska. Yoriska's saying hello. I think um, hello, Sab, is from Yoriska. In Peru, sunny Peru. I don't know if it's Peru or not. What do we say? Per That's where Paddington um, came from, isn't it? Paddington Bear came from darkest Peru. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And this is from Dorothy again, from a flower. Okay, now this is a flower. So it's not someone else's work, but it's nature's work. But I prefer this to the picture of the, the bit on the dress, which I couldn't see anything apart from that picture. So she's got in really close. It's absolutely symmetrical, orangey. And yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful shot. Uh, I would just um, <clears throat> I would just wonder if you would why did she give us this one? It's incredibly centered, you know. It's absolutely centered, and that's interesting. It can be quite it can be very striking. Um, I'd ask the question: Why choose that? Why choose that over another composition? She's gone in so close that you can't see the edge of the flower, which is interesting. Um, so we're deep, deep inside the flower. Possibly it needs something else. You know, it needs, it's so symmetrical. It's kind of like, okay, um, and, you know, I'd love there to be like an insect in the, on one edge of this or something, or maybe this lower down in one corner and the edge of the petals in the, in the opposite corner. Just something to give it a bit of contrast, you see, because... For me, it's just lacking, it's lacking the odd thing. What is the odd thing in this? What, what is the one thing that's, like an insect, like an insect. An insect in the bottom right here, for me, I know it's a cliche, an insect on a flower, but still, where's the, where's the contrast? Where's the, um, what are flowers for? Let's not get all philosophical. Let's take it at sort of standard level. What are flowers for? Or what do they interact with most visibly? Insects. Bees, let's say. Bees need flowers, flowers need bees. So let's have a contrast within the shot. That's for me, that's the thing that's missing in a in a, a creative shot worthy of presenting as such. Where is the contrast? Even if it's something as, you know, banal, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? An insect on a flower. But you know, just that would would give us the contrast. Flowers are for bees, there's the bee. Bees love flowers, so there's the flower. It would be the same thing if you just took a picture of a bee in, in midair. Bee, nice, in focus, 
uh, doing be like things, buzz, buzz, buzz. But so what? It could be a shot for a for a museum, you see, or a, a natural history website. What is a bee? You tell what is a bee? Here's a picture of a bee. So we're photographers, creative photographers. We've got to go further. We've got to have interaction between elements in the photograph. And get it sharp. Flowers um, blowing in the breeze are not that easy to get sharp. So that's another story. <laughs> it's Dorothy again. And this is orange. You can't get away from it. It's a huge lump of orange slamming into the top there. Oh, my goodness. There's a bit of orange here. And what have we got? It's a rainbow. Oh, Dorothy, Dorothy, Dorothy. You know, Sab in Paris here with his um, his slightly uh, dubious rainbow obsession. This is the Eiffel Tower in a rainbow painted by me, me myself and I. Um, uh, so she's got a rainbow in there. Whoa, hey. Dorothy's an interesting character. She sees interesting things in everything. She's got an incredible imagination, haven't you, Dorothy, if you're watching? <laughs> And I envy it sometimes. She looks at a tree and says, wow, I can see 17 faces. And I can see, well, I can see about 17,000 leaves, but um, so, you know, some of us have got it. Some of us hasn't, haven't. <laughs> okay, Facebook user, yep. Yeah. Alice is saying a uh, very nice focus on flower. Okay. And this is, yeah, so I'm gonna think about this one in terms of the winners. Hmm, interesting. She might have tipped it with the with that darn rainbow. You know what I'm like. You know my my weak points. And this is Angela again. I am a sunset lover. Wow. <laughs> fancy living in a place where you can get shots like that if you if you live there. Or fancy just being in a place. That is stunning, isn't it? Beautiful sunset silhouettes which is now you'd never you it probably wasn't this dark in reality but when you're shooting into the sun the whole picture goes dark which gives you beautiful silhouettes now you've got to realize that the shot would look much better with a silhouette take the cyclists away and i'm afraid it would be um much less interesting put the cyclists there you've got two of them they're not on the same bike are they you've got two cyclists there's a nice repetition there Cycling into the sun, framed nicely on the left with a tree, framed on the top with uh, other bits of a tree, framed on the right with a bench, and um, even framed on the bottom by some sort of line which is reflecting the sun again. So that's actually a rather, rather splendid shot. Thanks for that, Angela. What else have we got here? This is Lise. Love orange, she says. And I just clicked on that. Uh, what is this? It's a landscape with an incredible sort of Grand Canyon type thing, which is orange. This looks like it's been taken out of a car window. Uh, and why is it white on the left? Good question. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what this thing on the left is. Looks like it's been taken out of a window as you are admiring some incredible view. It would be interesting to have a bit more story on that least so that we could uh, say a little bit more like where it is and um, and stuff like that. Okay. And how are we doing? We've still got more. This is Rob. Rust is kind of orangish. orangish. Yeah, the rust is. I mean, the first thing I saw was this dash, this big panel of orange here on the right. And if it's if the theme is orange, you don't have to have. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Risk is just saying this photo is incredible. I'm guessing it's the sunset with the bikes. I'm, I'm guessing that's the one you mean. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? This one. Yeah, you've got a lovely dash. I mean, the strongest color, the strongest block of color here is the uh, the orange. And when you have a color as a theme for a photograph, it doesn't have to dominate the photograph, but it, if it's, it can be small, but if it's the brightest color, for example, if you've got an entire wall, a gray wall, you've got a tiny little piece of, I don't know, graffiti or something in orange, then obviously the orange would dominate even though it's tiny. Here, 
Yeah, I mean, orange is clearly the brightest color here, the one that attracts it. Um, the rest, the thing is, the rest are actually very, very interesting as well, especially this one in the middle here. That's fantastic. This rusty old, I was going to say barn, but what is it, a fishing shack or a, a boathouse? Wonderful colors, great reflections, really nice shot. Uh, Angela. Angela says, a pick from one of my niece's performances. She's a Latin dance teacher. Wow. So this is your niece. Sorry, guys. Uh, I couldn't change just one. Not quite what she, what, sure what she means. Maybe because she contributed more than one. You can contribute more than one. That's fine. So it's one of her niece's performances. She's a Latin dance teacher. Wow, that's really impressive. Beautiful shot. And it's been played around with. It's got some beautiful texture on it. Because she's moving, you can see she's moving for several reasons. The photo is a bit blurred. Okay, she's put a, she's put an effect on it to make it grungy. So, but before that, you can still see that she was turning because she's out of focus. The edge of her dress is out, which means she's probably turning around quickly. Her hair is out horizontally for the same reason. Her arm is a blur, and that's beautiful. And it's yeah, why not treat it with, uh, make it grungy as well? You might not have needed to put the grunge effect on, actually, because she would already be blurred. That would already give you that sense of movement and this sort of um, taking it away from grim reality, as I always say, moving it towards a kind of fantasy dreamland. So that's beautiful, absolutely beautiful shot. And I think the, the grunginess is nice. What do you think, guys? Do you like the grunginess on this? Or would you have preferred some other effect? It gives a feeling, doesn't it? It could be an old painting or from some old film or something. Amazing. Beautiful, beautiful position as well. The legs slightly crossed, uh, the arm up, the other arm obviously in front, in front. I'm sure it's like that, you know, from my from my um, flamenco dancing days. It would probably be about there. Yeah, I do like that a lot. Oh, she said, sorry, because she's added to, you can give me two, it's fine. Fabric detail of my today's clothing. Ah, so we got another one of these, just taking pictures of your dress, huh? Dancer looks like a painting, says Chris. Yeah, isn't it amazing? So uh, she took a picture of um, her, of her clothing that she was wearing. Okay, <laughs> seems to be a thing. And um, well, it's an interesting pattern, that's for sure with a huge dash of orange and a smaller bit of orange. And I think it's your risk of saying, yes, it looks like a painting. So we're, we all agree on the flamenco dancer or whatever it is she's dancing. I find it, yeah, beautiful. I, just, I love watching Latin American dancers or uh, flamenco dancers. Some beautiful, um, just amazing. Love the music, love the uh, the singing which can be quite very, very striking. And the guitar, you know, it's a completely different type of guitar playing. This is striking, but I don't have much to say about it, you know, because it's, it's a picture of a dress, a pattern on a dress, and nothing else gives me any context. So I wouldn't know what it was if you hadn't told me. Uh, in terms of composition, you can still talk about the composition, the slash, the diagonal slash, of the wide orange band is, you know, it's cool, it's impressive, it's diagonal. I like the fact that it's diagonal and then it's on the background on either side of the orange sort of leaves on black and then and it's slightly down to the bottom. You know, I like the composition of what you've taken, the way you framed it. That's yours, you see, the framing is yours. The pattern on the dress can be someone else's, but the framing is yours. You can still be creative when taking pictures of somebody else's uh, stuff. And uh, wow, this is gonna be a hard choice. What are your favorites so far, guys? Let me know. Let me know what you think of the nicest ones so far. Uh, this is from Jean. Uh, shh, horses in the wild beyond these pine trees. Um, construction horses laugh. Okay. <laughs> or zebras maybe, orange zebras. What about that, orange and white zebras? Yeah, that's uh, it's a good one, isn't it? It's finding a dominant color where you don't expect it and spotting it and taking a picture of it. I like it. And it's it's kind of framed by the tree. Yeah, 
That's a, it's a kind of a, fine, a found orange, isn't it? Found orange shot. Uh, Chris is laughing. Um, I wonder why. <laughs> Probably something funny someone said. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so great. Well spotted. Orange in a way you don't expect it. And Jean again, again. Right, so she's on a bit of a roll here. So this is a good thing you can do. You can go for a wander, looking for a color. And this, you never know, this might be one of the assignments on my five day free photographic five day challenge, which is coming up in, in our group, in the Creative Smartphone Photography Group, ne starting next Monday, five days. I'll tell you how to sign up for it. Because you have to sign up for it. You know, you can't just be in the group and come along and do it when you feel like it no well you can but i'm only going to give you the assignments if you sign up for it you know a bit of commitment and then we can get really serious and get some amazing stuff going that's my plan for the moment anyway so here she is she's wandering around and bam you've got a color in mind and suddenly you start seeing it everywhere and she has framed it so that there's this um um purple thing is in between them probably intentional i imagine because uh, seems like you've got a really good eye gene you look out for these sort of things the sun shining through the top of the tree you know even though it's a sort of weird shot on the theme of orange so you know i'm not saying that i'm not really applying any any um criteria to it other than you you got a shot with orange in having said that You've, you know, it's not just any old shot. You've tried to get that, I imagine, that purple thing in the middle. You've got the sun shining through the tree, slightly off to the left as well. So, you know, um, not only have you got the theme, we're still allowed to apply um, any photographic ideas we might have in our heads as well. And... Uh, Oh, Chris is saying, look deeply between the orange barrels. Yeah, well, I did, didn't I? And I saw that that strange purple thing, which I honestly, is it a sculpture of something? Some sort of strange sculpture? There's a lot of strange things um, near near Chicago, I think, So, or in Chicago. So that may, be well, may well be one of them. Chris is one. Here's one I found in the wild. Wow, a, a genuine wild um, orange traffic cone. I don't think there's many of those left, are there, in, in the wild? Most of them are, uh, are on, on, the, on the streets these days in, in suburban areas. Wow. Looks like that's lived a bit, doesn't it? But it's got a story to tell, if it could. It's orange. Here's Alice. Uh, this one was interesting. <laughs> Alice said, hospital food. Oh, you know what? Oh, wow. When I looked at this until, until this very second, I thought it was crumpled plastic cups that some uh, hospital food had come in. In fact, it's the hospital food. Um, purple sculpture. Yeah, I think this is Yeriska saying um, that it's a purple sculpture. Very strange, isn't it? So this is the food. Jelly, sort of orange jelly. Um, I said, I don't think I'll have what you're having. And Alice said, it's in focus, though. And I said, I'm trying not to focus on it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, 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 it's orange. Is that what they feed you? There must be a reason for it, like, like easy to digest or, or something like that. Okay, good stuff. And here's Jackie with a beautiful orange hat. <laughs> and behind an orange, in front of an orange sign. So, nice one. I like the fact that you've, you know, chopped off the bottom of your face, because otherwise it would just be a snap, whereas the topic's supposed to be orange, therefore the face has, um, what's the word? I don't know, but... It's, um, you know, you've focused on the orange hat by not focusing on the face. Otherwise, it, it would just be a snap, which is what I just said. 
Okay. Oh my God, there's still more. This is, you know, I wasn't expecting it. I, I kind of thought, well, no one's going to contribute to this. And then I came back a few days later and I saw loads of comments. Oh, this is me. This is me. Uh, this is a sun something. I didn't know if it was sunset or sunrise, to be honest. I couldn't remember. Over one of the old toll gate thingies. These, Paris was surrounded by several walls. As it grew, the walls went, oh, got a bit too big. Let's build the wall out of it. Oh, now it's too, now Paris has got too big and there are people camping around the outside. Let's build another wall a bit bigger, etc., etc. And this thing was a kind of toll gate thing on one of them walls. Uh, so that people coming into Paris would have to pay a toll, I think, probably to sell their goods or whatever. And this thing is still there at Stalingrad. And um, it's orange. And I, I was looking through my old photographs and I found this one as well. Uh, a very orange photograph. I mean, a very orange flower. I think it's a poppy by the looks of it. Yeah. And I, I, I probably orange orangeified it as well. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you want orange, I'll give you orange. And um, actually, simple as it is, you know, I do like the composition, even if I say so myself. It's amazing. I could just look at that for ages and just be amazed by the colours and by nature. I'm just wondering if the sun is shining through it from behind or on top of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the sun is, is shining from behind because you don't get that sort of amazing color if the sun is shining onto it. The sun shines onto it, you get a flat, boring sort of color. Whereas if it's shining through it, all sorts of stuff comes out. The texture, the, the, the sort of veins in the petals, you get sort of shadows of bits of the flower on the other flower. You imagine the sun is behind, you've got two bits here. This bit here will be have the shadow on the other bit in front of it. And then, and then you take a photograph of that. So that's beautiful. And you can also see it's backlit probably because the stem here is green and the edge of the stem is light, almost white, because the sun is highlighting those little hairs on the, on the stem. And this is Alice. Oh, Alice. Again, me in hospital. Oh, poor Alice. Poor, poor Alice. So this looks like it's a scale of one to ten. How are you feeling today? And... Uh, the orange one isn't feeling very good at all, is it? Maybe uh, maybe number one is what? Going to be green or something? Feeling okay? You know what? I hope you're moving towards green there, Alice. You know what? When I saw this, first of all, it really spooked me out. Oh, hang on. I've got um, Alice is saying liquid diet of jello. Okay. Only the best quality stuff in hospital, right? Jello. Jello. I don't know if you saw earlier, but I'm doing this um, diet thing. Not a diet thing. It's like a, a completely change your um, way of living. And um, <laughs> on the first week or two, you're supposed to you're supposed to eat exactly what you're eating because it's it's a mind shift thing. It's changing your mind shift, changing your your way of thinking about food altogether. So before you give up crap, you've got to realize how you are approaching the crap. So. You know, it's not enough to just say, oh, by the way, um, you know, Coke's bad for you, don't you? So um, stop drinking it. It doesn't work like that. You know, it's got to be way, way deeper for you to put an end to the crap. So the first couple of weeks is drink the crap and eat the crap. But think about what is going on in your head before when you fancy a bit of crap as you're craving it. Then you decide to go for it. You give in or you just go for it. How do you feel then? You eat the crap. What does the first bit of the crap taste like? What do the third and fourth and fifth and sixth bits taste like? Do they taste as good? No. And how do you feel after the crap? So I'm only on, only on week two, so I, I guess that's what's happening. Liquid diet of jello. This was so weird because the first thing I thought was this was the end of, this was the, a, broken, a broken off foot. And this was the sort of bit where the bone would be. You'd see the bone. You see what I mean? So I, first of all, I thought, oh, God, what the? Because it's tucked into the sock. You know, at first glance, I thought it was the leg. <laughs> and then I realized it wasn't. Uh, so there you go. Cream being put on dry leg. It's orange. The leg's almost orange. 
And Chris, in honor of our firefighters. Fantastic. Yeah. So as you said, it's part of a, a bigger mural. That's a great mural. Wow. Yeah, orange, the dominant color in this, isn't it? That's great. Now, what a wonderful thing to, to do with a wall. And on the firehouse wall, Yeruska has got flowers, beautiful orangey flowers. Looks like it's on a, is it on a beach or something? Orange and green go beautifully together. I had two favorite um, color sets as a kid. And I got my parents to paint my room in those two colors twice. So the first time I got obsessed by blue and orange together. So my, my room became blue and orange. Then I had another phase. It was green and purple. So my parents, oh, long suffering, uh, painted my room in green and purple, green and purple. And um, green and orange do go well together, actually, I think, you know, uh, green and purple. It could be a little bit dark, a little bit gloomy. Green is the darkened, you know, more subtle, earthy type. And then the bright orange really stands out. And it's a nice composition as well. Nice diagonal coming in from the side. Uh, I might have to pop back to another one. There's a bird on the flower stem. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, Yaruska, you know, I didn't even spot it. What is going on with me? There is a bird. I think maybe I saw this before and then forgot about it. There's a beautiful little bird. Is it a hummingbird on the stem of the flower? That's amazing. How could you catch that? Because hummingbirds, they, they beat their wings faster than anything else, don't they? Amazing. I'm guessing by the fact that it's slightly blurry, that it's a long way away. Is it? Was it quite a, in a distance or you had to zoom in a lot? Because to get a hummingbird, I'm sure they don't come and sort of sit on your nose. And I think we're getting to the end of the, here we go. I forgot to put my orange photo. There it is from Eurisca. I forgot. To put my, so that's a beautiful bit of um, something fungus. I can't remember what it's called. Someone in this group has a fancy name for this because I remember them saying it. Um, so it's a lovely piece of nature there. And um, I would even crop it. I would probably get rid of the bottom, to be honest. Crop it there. Have it have it square. Because, <laughs> you know, I like square photographs. I would probably crop it there and get rid of the bottom, bottom third or the bottom quarter of the shot. And that would be really hard hitting. And that, that, that curve, that curve of that would fit nicely into the corner of the photograph, you see. Whereas this bottom third for me isn't doing much. And, and it's so powerful. It's a shame to lose the power of this beautiful structure with such stunning colors um, for this huge bit of blur in the bottom. So I really like that. And I, I would crop it slightly differently. Okay, winners, winners, winners. Who's it going to be? Hang on. Yoska uh, says, a photo of a mushroom in Ox Oxapampa. Oxapampa. Is that a, a town? I don't know if it's a town or the botanical name for a, I don't know, a swamp or something. That is beautiful. All right. So I'm going to, oh my God, this is going to be so hard. Please, could you put in the chat, which is your favorite photograph, which isn't yours? Just let me know. Which is your favorite photograph that we have seen in the orange theme, which is not your photograph? Okay, so we, let's chug through them. We've got the orange from Yoruska. We've got the firefighter. We've got Alice's spooky leg. We've and her, um, her. How are you feeling today? Uh, smileys or not smileys? <laughs> grumpies. We've got orange hats. We've got hospital food. Uh, Chris says. Uh, Yoruska says, ah, Yoruska, you've become Yoruska. Maybe Facebook user isn't face isn't Yoruska. Um, Florit Sure Peru. Okay, I'm quite sure what that means. Um, drapes. Okay. Ah, Chris, you like the curtains, do you? You call them drapes. I call them curtains. Uh, the hospital food, the cone, the barrels, and the strange ze orange zebras. And Jean, you got Angela has got a bit of her dress. Oh, oh, guess which one is going to be one of the winners. Uh, so there's this little shot about the uh, dancer there. 
Um, Rob, and I do like this, you know, I do like this one. Um, from the window of something, could it be from a plane or a car of the mountain there? Um, Angela and the bikes again. Ooh, Angela's got a couple of strong ones here. The bikes, Dorothy's um, huge orange uh, garage thing, or petrol station or gas station, the flower, the dress, and Angela. Angela, you can't win all three. Now, come on. All right. So what have we got? We've got Chris says the boat hunt, the boat houses. Okay, you like the boat houses. Me too, yeah. Karen says the dancer. Chris says she loves the dancer as well. Yoriska says the dancer. Okay, well, look, uh, the dancer's definitely going to be a winner. All right, so the dancer is one of the winners. So that means this one here can't be the winner, and the, uh, the other ones can't be the winner. So this is one of the three winners. Okay, so who else? Who else? Mm, the boathouses are cool. Uh, I kind of like this, this garage, you know, with the huge orange thing. It's just uh, kind of, you know, bam, orange in your face. So it can't be her. All right, so I'm, I'm hanging on to the, the boathouses and the, the garage just for fun. The dress, I'm not going to go for the dresses for the reasons I said. Um, hmm. You know, there's something about this, this huge orange thing with the little sculpture in the sun. Um, this is kind of a shot of the thing. It's funny. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for something else. The food is, is amazing, you know, that this is food. You've got a nice angle in there, Alice, as well. Um, the hat, you know. The hat, <laughs> what can I say? It's an orange hat. It really is an orange hat, but in front of an orange sign. Um, this one just makes me feel uneasy. <laughs> um, the firefighters, again, you know, it's kind of somebody else's picture. You know what I'm saying here. You know, I like this one. I do like this one. The hummingbird, it's just that I can't quite see the hummingbird enough because I didn't spot it. I do like this one. Oh, this is tricky, and I don't want you to, you know, watch me listening, going, I'm an R, I'm an R. All right, so I'm going to just make a spontaneous decision here. The dancer. Could you just give me another, another two or three? Um, the mushroom, the mushroom. All right, Karen, I'm going to go for the mushroom. Bam, done. Hey, basta. Okay, I'm going to go for the mushroom. It's just the rich colours are beautiful, even though I would have cropped it slightly differently. But, you know, because it's in the middle, you see. Anyway, I'll stop going on about that. You've heard my opinion. Um, I know the firefighter was someone's work, just had to share it. Well, do share it. Do. I'm not saying don't share it. I'm not saying don't share it. It's stunning. And a tribute, you know, a tribute to firefighters. Wow. Don't we need them, you know? So many places, you know, apart from domestic fires, all these crazy fires that are happening all over the place now. Uh, so share, share, share. So I'm going to go for the mushroom. Yeah, I'm going to go for the dancer. So Yuriska, da 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 da. Um, Rob's thing. I like Rob's thing. <laughs> I'll go for this one. I'll go for Jean's one. Alice says, thanks for sharing the tribute. I guess, was it a tribute to the firefighters? Or was it the firefighters who painted it on there? Probably, probably a tribute. Oh, the drapes. I forgot about the drapes. What happened to the drapes? I don't know what happened to the drapes. Where did they go? Oh, this one here. Yeah, this is beautiful as well. Yeah, but um, she's already won. So. so there you go. So the winners for tonight are, although I like lots of them, The Dancer from Angela, The Wild Barrels from Jean and the
and the beautiful mushroom from Yoruska. There we go. Just for the richness of that, beautiful. All right, so there you go. Um, I will now have a quick look at some of my photographs from this week, uh, seven of them the last, from the last seven days. Uh, I will tell you that this week, September, is going to be quite uh, an exciting month because in five days we'll start a, five, a free five-day challenge. I'll show you very quickly in the group how to sign up for that. You'll have five very short videos with an idea and five simple assignments to take one photograph and post one photograph in the group five days in a row. And you never know, there might be a prize. Who knows? And I'll talk about them. I'll say how wonderful they are. All right, so I'm looking for each theme to have lots of photographs from people on five themes over five days. Should be fun. So for that reason, there's no theme this week. Uh, just warming up for that. Uh, all right, so the last seven photographs from my Paris Photo Chronicles. Those are the last three, and the last four are here. This is what the, the set looks like. How are we doing for time? Oh, 50, I'll try and finish in an hour, okay? Not an hour from now, an hour from when I started. What, you want me to go on for another hour? Really? So that was yet another colorful panel, thanks to Paris. Um, yep, all right, so the last four are ones that you probably haven't seen, because uh, that was um, seven days ago. And this one here, I was just struck by the, the poor old bench with the three different types of transport behind it. I uh, anthropomorphized the bench and thought of it as watching, sitting there. I mean, benches don't sit there, but you know what I mean. Sitting there watching life going by, but unable to move itself. It's got legs, but they're they're stuck to the ground. So that was kind of kind of cute. I like that. And the. What I, what I tried to get to start off with was this weird metro going up at an angle. You know, metros don't normally go up into the air at an angle. Don't you agree? But uh, this one does because it's going from underground to a bridge which takes, which takes it over the River Seine. So I thought, that's fun. So, of course, I had to get the thing because they they're not there all the time. You know, you have to wait for them and catch them in the right position. I had another version of this, several versions, where just the, the nose of it was on one side and the tail of it was on the other. I mean, different photographs. But the, the things in front, I was looking for more, you know? Even though the picture of a, a metro at an angle going past is fun, where's the contrast? Just like I said with the flower lacking the bee. Well, I so I had to get the, the train looking right with some contrast. And the contrast was the cars, another type of transport, the bike, another type of transport, and the bench, a place. You know, when you put something in the foreground, which we can associate with, it helps us get into the photograph. So a bench is good, or a chair, an empty chair, or an empty bench, because we can imagine ourselves on it. We can pretend that the bench is a person watching these people go by, or we can pretend we're sitting on the bench watching people go by. So it's a way to lead people into the photograph more than not, if you see what I mean. You might think this is nonsense, but I think it. I think it's true. I think it it helps. Uh, uh, Chris sort of randomly says, "When in doubt, grunge it up." Are you referring to this photograph? I wasn't in doubt. I had no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Doubt about what? Well, I won't tell you. Um, yeah, so I, yes, okay, I grunged it up. Fair enough. Well spotted. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I like it, you know. Um, that's all that counts, right? And, and this one. Well, let me just show you these two, these two in the bottom left and right. Same shop, same boutique, closed boutique. Graffiti like this, art like this isn't allowed unless it's commissioned. So I think it was commissioned by this boutique. I'm not sure if it's Mystique on the left. It's Mystique on the right. This one here is Mystique, M-I-S dot T-I-C, which sounds like Mystique, which sounds like mystical. Uh, and uh, she is a, a street artist who has accompanied me, well, through her lady in the dark little dress and the dark hair and the, the fun slogan, 
throughout all my years in Paris. She's always been there. And I've wandered the streets, believe you me. Uh, so she's she's accompanied me. And it's kind of a, it's good to see that she's still got really good quality things there. I mean, quality in terms of not in a bad, in bad condition. But she told me that she would go to jail. The police had told her if that she would go to jail if she carried on doing random street art unauthorized. Um, so it's it's this must have been commissioned, and that's great. On the other side was this one. On the other side of the shop, which is pretty cool. It looks like it could be her, and yet it's not really her style. You know, it's not the little the lady in the dress. So maybe it's someone similar who who did the other side. Maybe it's her branch. You know, doing a different style. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool guy there. And um, so I had him on the left of the shot, and I put him on the left of the panel as well. And the and the the lady is on the right of the shot here, and I put her on the right of the panel. Funky angle. You see these really cool angles. There's no angle. I mean, there's no line in the shot which is perpendicular to the edges of the frame. I mean, it's the edges of the, of the frame that make the lines in the photograph be at an angle. If you see what I mean. They're clearly at an angle in relation to the frame. So the frame is a very important thing to, to bear in mind. And I love these angles. Look, they're going vroom, they're going vroom, and vroom, and, and you know, lots of lots of vroom, variations on vroom. You've got the reflection of typical Parisian uh, houses uh, right up on the top. These are called Chambre de Bonne, with this funny little window up in, actually in the roof. And that's where when you come to Paris and you haven't got any money, you're desperately looking around for a place. You often end up in one of these places right at the top of the the the, the, the apartments. The Chambre de Bonne, it means the, the servants quarters, you know, um, that's where they used to live. Cause you know, the, the posh people ain't gonna trog up the stairs. This was before times of lifts. They're not uh, elevators. They're not gonna go up the stairs. So the, the servants go upstairs and and that and in the middle is this <clears throat> so this is actually my you know i do a series i do creative i call them um creative disintegration it's my self portraits throughout my life from a lot of years ago now until the end and maybe beyond and for the last thousand days approximately i've been doing them every 10 days they're part of my paris photo chronicles they're every 10 days and it's because I'm always there. It's not really an ego thing. It's because I'm always there. I'm always with me. And well, you know, I'm kind of interested in me to an extent. So why not take photographs of myself as a creative challenge? No self-portrait, no one, none of my perturbing self-portraits must look like any others. And I give you that as a challenge. Why don't you do that? Why don't you take creative self-portraits of yourself? I mean, creative, not snaps, not cheesy grins creative self-portraits of you from now on every week until the end why not none of them can look like any any others you can keep them to yourselves if you like you don't have to you know but it's actually a really good project and this is one of mine it's less obvious a few of them these days have been a bit bit too much of my face i think so this one i like i'm in there i'm in the the lion and there is a kind of double meaning because um i'm a, i'm a lion leo in the zodiac I mean, I don't really, you know, think that random constellations uh, control my personality and determine my um, every movement and such like, but it's fun. And I had a really good collection of Leo mugs as a kid. So, you know, I do believe in it to that extent. I believe I believed in my collection of Leo mugs as a kid. And, um, and there it is. That's a Leo. And there was a really cool thing in the Today's of the Day group, which is this. You have to join this if you're not a member. It's so cool people just noting the, the thing each day that they would love to remember. And it's so beautiful because our days go by and we don't, we don't remember them. We don't notice them sometimes, but great things do happen. So the, the reason for this group is the raison d'etre is to remember something special each day. And I've got 40 seconds to finish this. Remember something special each day. And Ruth, who has actually just given a comment, which is really weird, she put, I won't show it, this is kind of slightly less public, this group, and I do a live in this group on normally Saturday. Um, and I go through everybody's today's today and honour them and say how wonderful it is. Um, 
She, on the day at the same time I published this photograph, uh, what photograph? Where was I? I'm lost. She, she put a sticker of a lion on her phone cover so as not to lose it, not to lose the phone, not to lose the sticker of the lion, I guess. Um, and so, you know, fun. We had a kind of semi discussion over about two messages as to whether it was coincidence or synchronicity. Um, I tend to be rather irritating uh, by saying things like, what a nice, what a wonderful coincidence, which I thought was quite positive. And I got two people slamming in saying, there's no such thing as coincidence. It was synchronicity. Um, and to be honest, synchronicity just means things that happen at the same time. So hello. Um, but, you know, I, that's where I start to get really irritating and piss people off for being clever or stupid or something. So um, anyway, anyway, you know that I'm okay. I'm not really trying to, you know, be nasty or anything, but, um, you know, language is funny and so are people. This is the last three and then we're done. We're out of here. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. It's so cool to have you here. I love it. I love it. Well, everybody says I love you. It's a bit corny, but you know, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm British. I don't express my uh, emotions, and we don't we don't do that sort of thing. You know, there was a, a famous theatre play. What's that word that means you say the same thing twice uselessly? Something oxymoron or something? No. Anyway, um, there was this play, this British play, I think it was. It's called No Sex, Please. We're British. <laughs> Um, so here are the last three, my, la my last three, my latest three. You know the word for last and latest is the same in French? That's kind of, that can cause some interesting um, misunderstandings. <laughs> but, oh, I just saw his last film. What? He's dead? And uh, Karen says, that lion reminds me of the Royal Bank symbol here in Canada. I thought you were about to say the Royal Bank of Scotland. The Royal Bank symbol here in Canada. Yeah, well, it's actually the it's a very stylish, stylistic version of the the traditional Peugeot lion. And uh, this is um, I got this just a couple of days ago um, in the 13th district. Uh, you know, wandering around, I had I, I missed a train, so I thought, okay, what can I do in 20 minutes? Well, <laughs> guess what? I decided to do take a walk, and I got the next two shots. This one is on a building, a high building you know, several stories high with a horrendous thing on the left. But I just thought it was cool. And then I played around with it to make it look cooler. It's a dinosaur skeleton. Um, probably, no, the, the the Dinosaur Museum isn't right next door. It's next to Austerlitz. And this was at um, Bibliothèque François Mitterrand. But anyway, you know, it's probably advertising the Dinosaur Museum or something. Paleo, 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 Paleo something or other. And um, it's pretty cool, you know. You don't always see a, dino, uh, a several stories high dinosaur skeleton in your face as you're walking around. So I thought that was great. And I probably wrote a really funny or clever text to go with it, which is not our, our, um, our remit here. There's an angle, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed. Funky angle. I like the fact that the dinosaur seemed trapped, that my article's coming back to me now, which is here. Um, with a with a, a cool layout as well, relating to what I talk about in the article. I like the fact that the dinosaur seems to be trapped in the building. It's like he's in a cage and he can't get out. You know, it's like you're pressing against all sides. So I thought that was pretty cool. Obviously, I didn't do that. The artist did that, but I like that fact um, that it's like that. And then I, I, I imagined some text about us being like dinosaurs. You know, we're modern dinosaurs on our way out voluntarily as we destroy the planet. This was right next to it. And um, I'm obsessed by Paris curiosities. And, and, um, and this is one of them. There's these Wallace fountains. They're normally boring bottle green, but just every now and then, there's about a hundred of them, every now and then in secret little places, someone has like taken, gone on a mushroom trip or something and <laughs> done this with them, you know, but dark, boring bottle green, painted bright yellow. And there's a there's a 
violent pink one around the corner from this as well, which was um, was was also one of mine. So if you follow me long enough, you'll see you'll see all the variations. There are also variations in the fountain itself, like you know different styles. There's about three or four different styles. About two or three of them are very rare, and these are very common. And you, you might even have one of these near you because there's a few foreign towns that have the Wallace Fountain as well. It was to, to give the poor people um, clean drinking water. And the last one, kind of talking of drinking water, this is today's. And this is so weird. I've never seen this before. Have you? It's a female urinal, a woman's urinal. Yes, it does exist. Um, in a picturesque part of Paris near near you. It's in Montmartre. And um, I mean, I'm only guessing a, a female, a woman's urinal must mean that you can't poo there, right? And there's a really explicit picture of a woman um, peeing. She seems to be sort of levitating a couple of inches above the toilet seat so that you can see the pee going down from her rather... Uh, perfunctory buttocks, as I as I said in my text, which you can check out if you like. It's on my profile right today. So there you go, you know, and I, I went off into some sort of slightly um, disturbing fantasy about women's urinals and, well, I'll leave it there. Um, so that was funny, you know. On the edge of this, on the end of this construction is uh, men's urinals, which are making a comeback, actually, because they used to have these really old... They called them um, Vespasien, something like that. It was stunningly photographic. There's only one left in all of Paris. Oh, my God, I pray. I've become instantly religious. I pray they don't take it away because it is so amazing, uh, a vestige from the past, a thing the guys went into and peed in. Um, it, it's, it's so characterful. I must get over there quickly again. There's a couple of things that have disappeared from Paris that I deeply regret not having photographed. And I don't want that to be one of them. I mean, I have photographed it, but not for this series. So there you go. On the end of these things, men's urinals are making a comeback because I guess, well, Paris is kind of famous for people pissing all over it. Um, men pissing all over it. But it's kind of their fault, isn't it? You know, so Paris is actually great now for public toilets. But why do one where you can't poo? That's kind of, I, I just can't get my head around this. I mean, is there not a drain system in this particular road? You know, what's the problem? I don't get it. Um, anyway, but I didn't, as I say in my text, I didn't actually go inside the woman's urinal, strangely enough. So I, um, I need one of you guys to do the research for me. But don't go in expecting to poo because I think you're going to be greatly disappointed and not at all relieved. See my text for more details. Uh, yeah, Yariska's saying it's useful. I used it the first time I went to Paris. Now, hang on a second. Um, I hope that... I'm kind of assuming you mean this <laughs> and that you can get a drink from it when you're out in the street because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to assume you're telling me about your... your um... Defectory habits. Um... Anyway, there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to pursue that. Oh, it was very clean. It was very clean. All right. The toilets are very clean. Yeah, but you know, this is one way you, you, I don't think you can poo. You just pee. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, if you're lucky, they're clean. And, um, and if you're not, then they're not. But there's loads of them. It's really good. You know, there was a time back in my darker days when I knew where every damn one was. As well as where every damn um, late night opening um, grocery store, which sold everything, was as well. Alice says, I remember the green one by Shakespeare Bookshop. Yeah. Oh, right outside. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Right outside. It's a wonderful one. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. We're at the end. Uh, so thanks for sticking with me. Really happy to have had you here. You know, you are what makes it worthwhile. And... I'll just leave you with a, a note from my sponsors. Uh, go here to infin infinitecreativitynow.com to check out what's coming up next in my, my, um, my world. 
in terms of uh, masterclasses. Photography masterclass coming up in a few days. Um, the five-day challenge coming up in even fewer days next week. Watch out for that. It's free. The masterclass is a beautiful investment of your of your time and enthusiasm. And uh, also, um, in between the five-day challenge and the masterclass, I will be doing pop-up photo analyses of about three photographs, really quick, as a way of promoting the, the masterclass as well. Uh, if you click on this big pink button, you get to the masterclass sign-up page. Turn your sad smartphone snaps into artistic masterpieces in nine exciting weeks. And some of you watching now did exactly that. And um, if you go here, infinitecreativitynow.com slash newsletter, which I've put the link here, you join my creativity clan. And the creativity clan is the newsletter. You get nine ninja tips. You get a newsletter with a creative idea or thought every day. And you can also join the Infinite Creativity Now group where we talk about creativity. It's about creativity itself and productivity, getting the ideas out there. And it's also about anything you want to contribute. It could, obviously, I've got the groups for photography and writing. I've got those. But you can contribute anything in this group, Infinite Creativity Now. There's prompts every day. It's fun. It's fast. It's furious. What am I talking about? Okay. And um, so that's about it. My next live will be on Thursday when I'm talking about writing, talking about words. And I'm going to say goodbye before we all fall asleep. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much. Really love this. Love talking about photographs. Love you being there, interacting. Um, tell your friends. Tell your friends about anything that I'm up to as your creative go-to guy in Paris that anyone you think would be interesting, get them on board. Um, anyone you think would be interested in the five-day photographic challenge, sign up yourselves. You'll be able to do that probably tomorrow. You sign up for it. It's you know it's for people who show their enthusiasm. It's not just for anyone who comes and goes. I want people to say I'm in. And, um, and that's it. Let's have some more Coca-Cola eh, before it goes out of fashion. Bye, everybody, and see you again very soon.